we have two more talks left in this room. Uh, one of them is uh, uh, Gareth, and um, he will uh, take us through CNAB. Whenever you're ready. Okay. Uh, can everyone hear me? Sounds like it. Microphone. Uh, okay, so I'm here to talk about uh, CNAB. Um, so basically, pack a new project basically centered around uh, a specification for a package management format. Uh, if that doesn't sound like your sort of cup of tea, feel free to leave. Uh, so I'm Gareth Rushgrove. I'm Gareth Rushgrove, basically everyone on the internet. Um, I think I know a whole bunch of folks in this place. Uh, Previously at Puppet, do a lot of things now at Docker. Um, I'm formerly the product lead for uh, all of our developer-facing tools, sort of everything from like Docker Desktop to a lot of the like things like this. So I'm going to take a run through uh, basically a bit of background about like what CNAB is trying to solve and where it came from. Um, I'm going to dive into the details of the actual specification. Um, like why it's a spec, I'll explain, and what that means, I'll sort of go into a little bit. Um, but I'm going to spend a bunch of time just like actually demonstrating a lot of the tools that pe that uh, people have started building around the space. Um, I'll take a quick straw poll. Who's come across CNAB before? That's quite a lot more hands than I thought. Um, like, but again, a small number. Part of it, I mean, this was just announced at. Uh, DockerCon and Microsoft Connect uh, in, at the end of December. So this is l just over a month old from public. So super early stage, but hopefully of interest. So CNAB is a, a spec for packaging distributed applications. Um, it has a nice shiny website. Feel free to go to cnab.io um, where you can sort of find out a, a bunch of background. Um, I'll sort of provide a bit of sort of the context and sort of history as well. So one of the questions that comes up in sort of any, I guess, infrastructure management uh, conversation, this being a good example, is like, how many tools do you actually use to do your job, to manage just a system end to end? And that might be you, it might be more the general you in terms of your organization, different teams, different parts of different teams. Um, the answer's sort of a lot, um, I think. And this conference is probably a good example of where it's definitely a lot. There's a talk about half, a, half of these or most of these or at least some of these. Um, a lot of talks, and I think this is more the interesting part, a lot of talks will talk about multiple of these. It's not that actually you pick one and you're done. You often end up picking multiple tools. So maybe it's that you're using like you're using Kubernetes, but you're using it on Azure, and you're using ARM templates to stand your cluster up, and you're using some Kubernetes configs and some Helm charts to actually deploy a bunch of Docker, Docker images on your cluster. Or, you, or you've gone all fancy and using Terraform and serverless framework together to stand up a bunch of uh, RDS instances, and you're using serverless to sort of connect to them. Or you're using Chef and CloudFormation. You're bringing up a, a bunch of AWS infrastructure, and you're managing it. Ad infinitum on combinations of these. Um, and this is not a complete list of tools, and there'll be more tools tomorrow, and we'll all come up out with more of them. I'd sort of posit that that's reality. There's, I'm, I guess, especially, well, in this community, I think all communities, there's always generally the, ah, this is sort of terrible. Like, there are many, there are lots of different tools, there are loads of different tools. Actually, here's a new tool that replaces all the previous tools. It's never really worked out. We invariably add new tools. Yes, they can be better. Yes, they can simplify things. Yes, they can remove maybe a couple of tools for a specific need, but there'll be another tool come along that you will use alongside it. Or, you'll, or in the context of your organization, maybe one of your groups is using this one tool, and another group, another team is using a different set of tools to achieve the same purpose. I'd posit that however much we'd maybe like, theoretically like to, we will never get out of a world, even in an, a reasonable size organization, of multiple tools and multiple tool chains. Like the, I think just reality is against us um, saying one tool to rule them all. 
partly because every new one tool to rule them all ends up with another tool to add to the list. I'm sort of saying I, I know that diversity of tool chains, I, I, I think is here to stay, especially globally. Um, so C9 is taking a sort of very pragmatic approach to this. Um, a lot of those individual tools often come with a package metaphor. Not all of them, some of them. I'll come back to that in a moment. Um, CNAB is basically saying, OK, it's a package thing, but bring your tool chain with it. Bring your tools along with it. So you're not actually just bringing the content. You're bringing the tools required to interpret the content as well. I'll show some demos of how that works later. One of the things that definitely comes up in any conversation like this, where it's like, hey, I've got a new thing. Um, it's true of tools, definitely true of like formats and specifications. It's like, haven't we been here before? Um, and the answer's sort of, hopefully, not completely. Um, but certainly when it comes to package management formats, uh, like, have we, re have we done this, like, have we invented package management formats before? Yes, it's definitely more than once. Um, like obligatory reference to the, uh, like there are 14 competing standards. I know I've got a new one and now there are 15. I don't think that's quite true in, like, in the context of CNAB. I'll go into why I don't think it's quite true and why it's not actually just adding two things. It is something slightly different. But there's always that risk. There's always that sort of, and it's worth being conscious of. And I think it's worth like publicly calling out versus sort of people are just making fun of you on the internet. Like one of the things there, and one of the things about aiming for a specification, and we're building tools as well to test that out, but is CNAB is not trying to solve all of the problem. The reality is it's probably not going to end up as a sort of consumer brand. It's probably not going to end up as something that actually lots of end users think about using. Hopefully, it's going to end up as something lots of end users use because it's under the hood. So in, it's not about something like Puppet or Chef or even Kubernetes. It's much more like something like OCI, like the Open Container Initiative, where it's like, actually, there's the distribution spec. This is why every time you do a, like a Docker pull or something like from any of these different repositories or you use other tools from other folks to pull uh, Docker images from, their, from different repositories or hub or wherever, all of that works because there's a bunch of agreement at the OCI distribution level and the OCI image spec that says, yep, yeah, this is how we agree how this works. So you know, it's more at that level than a high level. But as we found out with uh, security vulnerabilities, everything gets a shiny logo and stickers, so we've got those too. So what do we mean by package? Um, so I think you can sort of think about it like this, sort of a package without some metadata is sort of, well, what is it? Um, it needs to exist in the real world, so what's the, or at least our computer real world, like what's the actual on-disk representation? Um, how do you run it? How do you actually execute it? And also, how is it distributed and shared? I and mean, if you think, if you're more familiar with sort of RPM or DEBs, you can sort of think, yeah, and there's an RPM spec file. There's a there's an agreement about how you run an RPM. Like again, it's just a file system, but it's a file system with a known file system layout. It's a file system with some known metadata at a known location. It's a file system which can be run in a certain way and distributed in a certain way. That's sort of, I think, a, a reasonable summary of what we mean when we talk about packages. Coming back to some of those tools that I called out earlier, obviously not all of them, but you can sort of run this for any and more. Um, some of them have a concept of packages already. Um, I'm Terraform with Terraform modules, Helm with Helm charts. Um, and Puppet and Chef and Ansible are really good sort of like previous generation examples of that where like Puppet had Puppet modules, Chef had Chef cookbooks, Ansible had Ansible modules. Um, 
invariably one of the reasons you reach for the sort of package metaphor is for the, the benefits you get out of distribution. So Puppet Forge, Chef Supermarket, Terraform Module Registry, the Helm Charts Repository, all of that sharing a package. Now, you can share Terraform code on GitHub. You can share Helm Charts just on, like, as, a, as just source. You can share Puppet Modules as source. And some people will always use those things. But if you look at sort of the numbers of people who are much more likely to use something via a actual more formal distribution mechanism, it's greater. Um, uh, Docker is a good example of this. I mean, Docker files are widely shared on GitHub, and there's loads of Git Docker files on GitHub. There are an awful lot more Docker images on Hub, and that's actually what you tend to interact with. You pull the images rather than like, going to the Docker files. Like, you, you sort of benefit from both, having a source representation and having an actual package that you can do things with. Um, and some tools do build those things, and they tend to benefit. What's, like, what's seen I'm just trying to do, the sort of observation here is, this is a, a useful pattern, um, but everyone does it themselves. And doing them themselves, what it really comes down to is, you come up with a metadata file. Um, it always has name, it always has version, it always has a bunch of metadata about who owns this or maintains this. Um, and you come up with a file format, and you pick the one that's popular at the time, so basically a YAML or JSON or INI or whatever it was at the moment in time when everyone was like, this is the new hotness, so you've got a Toml file somewhere. Um, you decide an arbitrary file system format, bunch of folders in a specific structure, um, literally no one cares. It's all just below the line. No one, it, it's not differentiating anyway, and you do it every time you come up with one. So who knows actually what's under the hood of a puppet module, like when it's actually packaged up and distributed? Like, is it a zip file? Is it a tar file? What's the file structure? What does the actual like, metadata file look like? It doesn't matter. It matters about the tools reading that. But if everyone's done it themselves, everyone has to build their own tools, and you end up with these very fragmented ecosystems. You can't put a chef cookbook on the Puppet Forge, or a Helm chart on Docker Hub, or whatever it might be. So, so you know, it's sort of, well, compatibility between registries and that sort of repository is actually, it reduces the upfront cost for adopting new technologies. Because actually, if you buy my sort of posit of like, your organization is probably using lots of different tools. And if you say, well, packages are useful, ergo, you're probably running multiple different package repositories, like lots of them, like loads of them. And every time you get a new technology, you sort of go, oh, how do we run another repository? Oh, we're getting a bit of volume adjustment. Oh, that's good. Um, it's all just, op on that side, it's operational heavy lifting. Why are you running multiple repositories? They're all slightly different. They're all needing different characteristics. Um, can we agree at that level and make things easier? Let's see. Um, seeing them as well is like about that agreement on the formats and standard bits. But it doesn't mean you end up just with like one ubiquitous set of tools. Probably not going to happen. Um, but a lot of the sort of bits that go into making those tools, like actually, again, are just undifferentiated. I'm parsing that file, like enforcing that file structure, parsing those config files. Agreement there should lower the barrier to new tools coming along to introduce package like concepts in their tools. Like before, if you wanted a package like metaphor in your tooling, you had to do all of that stuff yourself. You had to write all. You had to write a repository, a registry. You had to write, like, decide on a file system format. You had to have a fight internally about like whether it should be a YAML file or a Toml file. You had to do all those things yourself, and then you got to do what you wanted, which was distribute packages to people. Um, here it's all like, actually let's lower that barrier to entry for new tools, and also open it up to um, tools that don't have it already without having to necessarily change those tools in the process. They can choose to get more involved and have more first-class integration, but they don't need to, which also gives you a sort of 
incentive from a project perspective to get involved, but also from an end user perspective not to be blocked by like an upstream project who doesn't want to play. So CNAB is a lot more like something like MSI in like Windows land um, than something like Helm charts or Terraform modules. It's not technology specific. Um, I, I work for Docker, I previously worked for Puppet. It's nothing to do with the specific technologies. Um, and the work has sort of been incubated within my team at Docker and the team at Microsoft. But we're all, we, we've uh, already submitted the spec to OCI as a potential sort of body that would actually hold it as an independent entity. Um, a lot of the tooling will probably end up in some other independent, like uh, middle ground foundation y thing. Um, exactly where, don't know yet, but we did only announce it a month ago, so we're working progress. So, so a quick demo at that point. Not really showing anything interesting. Um, but hopefully of interest. Let me double check. Uh, I'll make that a little bit bigger. Oh, if I can remember how to set that up. There we go. Oh, does that work at the back? John says yes. So, um, what I'll carry out this with, I'm showing you under the hood for this audience. Again, like at some point in the future, if CNAB works out, no one would ever look under the hood in the same way as no one really looks under the hood of any of the other package formats you've, you've ever used, unless you're building tools against them. I'm showing you because it's a month old and we don't really have the high level tools yet. Um, and also, we're looking for people who are interested in things at this level. So, there's a couple of things here, ignoring the README. Um, I've got a directory called CNAB. Um, it has a, uh, basically a basic file structure, CNAB app. Um, it's got a file in there. Um, that file happens to be uh, a bash script. This doesn't mean like CNAB is in any way relate, like sort of, oh, you need to use bash. You don't, ultimately, you need an executable entry point that adheres to the interface that the spec lays down. This could be a Rust program, a Go program. It could be anything you want. Um, it's a bash script here because it's nice and easy to show. Everyone can sort of vaguely get what's going on. Um, so there's a bunch of environment variables. This is the interface that the spec describes. So there's a concept of actions. There's a concept of an installation. Um, and if you look here, all of this uh, script is doing is basically depending on the action, it's going to print something slightly different based on that action. So if it's if it's the install one, if it's uninstall, um, then it's going to print a message at the end. So it's obviously not doing anything very clever. Um, the other thing that was in that directory uh, was a bundle.json file. So again, config file like the, uh, the that's described by the spec, the schema for this. Um, well, the package has a name, the package has a version. There's a concept of invocation images that I'll sort of come back to. This is sort of a detail of how we bring the tool chain along with uh, like the application config. Um, uh, this is using the Docker backend for this. Um, in theory, this is pluggable. There is actually a proof concept of using like a VM. This is really just like you need some environment in which you execute the code. Uh, the reality is the sort of using containers makes a bunch of sense there, but actually you could make any sort of invocation image out of other things. Um, that's blank, that's not even need to be there. And uh, this application describes a number of parameters. So um, I'll dig into loads of other bits and pieces in the spec, but parameters are all about building a UI for your package. So one of the things that crops up is, I mean, Having a package is fine, it drops the same bits everywhere. But actually, you then want, you end up with a situation where you often then mutate it or change it or add something to it on a per environment basis. Oh, production is configured like this and staging actually wants to be like that. We use that name here, we use that name there. Um, parameters is really just bringing that into the package itself. Um, so here I'm describing uh, a parameter called port. It has a default value and it has a, uh, some typing information. What that allows for is to building a user interface dynamically based on that package. So, and you could, I like, this isn't the tooling, this is me using the tooling to describe something. And actually, if we went back and had a look at the 
run file, you'll see actually this prints out whatever that parameter might have been, either the default value or the one we've picked. So not a very interesting package. Just going to print something out. But let's run it. Any let's install it anyway. Um, for that, I will use I'll use a cool called Docker app. It's an internal thing. So, um, and I'm just going to inst install it, pointing at the file. We'll come to some more in interesting int like installation mechanisms and some other tools later on. Uh, and it's done what we thought. It printed out a port that was set to the default value. It ran. It it said, well, yeah, you r you run install, and then it printed something else out. And We can uninstall it as well. So not, I mean, again, like not interesting. Like, and Docker App is just simply one tool, and I'll cover some other tools that actually are a CNAB client. But that's we installed a package, we installed something, um, and under the hood, it's a file system and some text and, and a structured document. So sort of again, like there's not a lot of magic um, there. Hopefully. Like, I, with that little bit of context, and I'll come to more interesting demos later, but like with that context, it's worth diving into, well, what's the spec actually describing? What's in there? Um, it's just a GitHub repo, a bunch of activity on this. I, I, it, like people are asking questions and issues, people opening pull requests to correct bits and pieces. And it's, all, it's evolved over the last month in the open, um, where I'm like right now having a hope there's a weekly meeting on Wednesdays, there's a Slack channel on the CNCF Slack, so we're like, there's people are coming along and saying, actually, I've been doing something like this before. Here's what I think. Um, it's already getting better for having many eyes on it. Um, so uh, CNAB, I'm coming back to that sort of, what do we mean by package? CNAB describes uh, the bundle.json file format as metadata. The on disk representation is like a specified file system layout. You saw some of that with the CNAB and uh, app and run bits. Um, execution is, and this is where the, that invocation image comes in. Um, execution is uh, this concept of an invocation image. It's basically, uh, there are multiple different implementations, but one of them is the OCI runtime. And so what's happening there is the client, the CNAB client is doing very little, and it's assuming very little about the environment it's running in. When I actually did Docker app install, it ran an image. It, ra it ran, a, and in that case, on top of a Docker daemon, but it could be on any. Basically, it ran an OCI image, passed in the parameters as context, passed in the environment bits as context, and then, in that case, printed a bunch of pieces out. But it might also have been that it fired off a bunch of API requests to different services. It might have run a Helm chart. It might have run a Terraform module. It could have been anything else. And it's taking that invocation image because that has the combination of the tool chain, i.e. like maybe the Terraform CLI, and the actual data, i.e. maybe the Terraform modules that you brought along. So those things are then transferable. They're packages. They're just OCI images, which also comes to the uh, distribution part of that. Um, they're just OCI images. You can distribute them with any registry you already have that is able to distribute OCI images. So maybe that's maybe you're using Hub, maybe you're using our commercial like Docker trusted registry things, maybe you're using um, uh, Amazon's ECR or uh, uh, Azure's ACR or, or all the other registries, or you're running your own distribution or you're running Quay or whatever it might be. Um, the spec basically makes those two bits pluggable, um, uh, and I said there is a POC of a like VM-based execution invocation image bit. Um, I think the container one is, at least at the moment, much more likely to be the default useful one. But that the spec itself is pluggable. Um, there were some conversations about whether uh, you could have a, like basically back it onto a serverless platform. I think the answer is probably yes, but no one's done it yet. The spec's not opinionated about those things. There's a sort of subset of it that's got the OCI bits in. Um, it's not that long. I mean, there's, there's a basically there's a bunch of text. You have to sort of have a certain slant to want to read specifications on the internet. Um, but you came along to a talk that was about spec, so 
like maybe you're those types of people. Um, have a read, especially of the sort of the chapter one bits, which are like that's the core of it. That's really what we're talking about as specification. The, the non-normative things is a bunch of other crazy ideas that are not like you don't have to implement if you're building tools against it. So running through all those core bits, um, bundles.json is the schema for the package metadata. Uh, so again, it's not a load of data, and it's not unfamiliar if you've done any packaging work before. Um, you won't be surprised that you can put a description and some, some keywords and some and the maintainers in there. You won't be described that you can specify the license under which this packa package is available. Um, a lot of it is basic metadata. The point here of specification is agreement. Like, is it called, what's it actually called? What's the structure of it? What are the limits of it? Um, credentials are that observation that we're not talking about a package in the sense of NPM or in RPM where you're installing, on, you're running in a local context and you're installing in the same context. This is really all about packages for API-driven infrastructure. That means they're probably somewhere else. That probably means you need some credentials to access them. And rather than it just saying, well, credentials are magic and they're somewhere on your local file system, it makes it very explicit that you have to pass in those credentials. And so there's a bunch of stuff in the spec around how those are passed in. But credentials are, you're saying, this is the, this is the credentials I require for this package to be run. Now, if you had a package that was firing some things upon Kubernetes, and I'll show some examples, like that would be, well, I need a Kubernetes config. Um, if it's firing something upon AWS, it would be saying, well, I need uh, an auth token for AWS, which has the permissions to fire up what you're trying to do. If it was both at the same time, your package would be saying, well, I need both of those two things, and on and on. CNAB has a concept of actions, which we saw very briefly in terms of install and uninstall. Um, the spec basically says to be a package, you have to implement install, uninstall, and upgrade. Um, however, you can add your own actions. So actually, it's, um, you, can, you can make your packages more functional. Without that being in the spec, allow it, and you also have a mechanism for tools to discover those things you've done to your packages. So an example um, might be uh, you provide an action that gives end user documentation for your package in a nice user friendly format. So actually your packages can, you can run, I was running Docker app before, maybe which is in our client, I might run Docker app docs. And it goes, well, that package has a custom action and uses that. It's discovering that you can sort of imagine what you can do. So you can install, you can extend it with your own actions. Uh, parameters we sort of talked through, it's all about building a user interface to the package. Um, again, partly down to, it's about API driven infrastructure. You want that to be a first class part rather than the more typical model of like on a host based system where you might have the package that installs the thing and the config separate stand like alongside it. And then you use Puppet or Chef or, or Ansible to basically wrap those into a conceptual whole. Here, actually, parameters are a first class part of the actual package itself. And there's, there's actually some extension stuff as well for adding your own metadata as well as obviously the actions. So I talked through a little bit of what invocation images were. And partly this is the file system. It's, the, it's, it's what goes where on disk. Um, it's also the executable entry point, that run entry. Now, that was a bash script, could be anything. It has to be executable, it has to adhere to the interface, but that's it. One of the other things the spec uh, records is, is the concept of claims. Uh, this is a record of that action. So this is actually optional. You don't necessarily need to do so. You can just take the package and install it. You can take the package and say, well, actually uninstall this. Um, but you might be using the package to ins install multiple v copies of something. You might have a WordPress package, and you install WordPress in multiple places using the same package, uh, maybe using different parameters. Now, claims are about uh, saying, I have a list of those things. 
So you'd have a claim store that would list those in installations, and you can manipulate that. The spec describes not an implementation of that claim store, but the format by which you store those things. Um, so slightly meta, it's also not trying to, again, like be everything to everyone. There could be multiple claim stores. They could, different tools could implement them in different ways. Um, maybe one wins at an implementation level, um, but it's not really requ required. The spec also covers a bunch of sort of um, fundamental sort of security and signing functionality. Um, so like if you have packages, that's all well and good. If you don't know where they came from, you don't trust them. You don't have a mechanism to build trust in them. Uh, it's, you're just downloading random things from the internet and running them on your computers, this time with against all your API-driven infrastructure. Uh, so I, again, like this is table stacks really for being a good package management system. Doesn't mean all package management systems have this. Um, a bunch of this is, there was some conversations in the context of the spec around this being, I guess, backed by a bunch of crazy P, uh, PGP stuff. Uh, in reality, Tuff and Notary, which are pretty common in the sort of container space, are sort of looking to be used there. Um, so that's the sort of, I mean, well, some of the sort of problem and a quick dive into sort of the spec. But I want to, like, there's a, it's not all just dry spec stuff. People are, we are trying to, and other people are start now starting to build things around this to test it out. That's already having a good impact on the spec. Because um, we don't care about the spec, we care about the tools, but we don't want there just to be random tools. Um, but you don't want to get too far ahead on either side. So um, one of the tools is called Duffel. Uh, so this is the reference implementation for the spec. Um, so it's a package manager for CNAB. So it will allow you to install or uninstall or run actions. Um, there's a bunch of things in here that are sort of changing alongside the spec. Um, at some point, this becomes a useful way of actually, if you're using Go, to vendor various bits and pieces of this into your applications. Uh, like it's the library. It's the reference implementation for what's going on in the spec. And um, that doesn't make it the only one. And we'll come to one of the we've got going at the moment. Um, it's also not about making the most, the, the most user friendly or, or in any way opinionated tool on top of it. But not having anything in this space is sort of bad as well. So following through that, I mean, like Duffel allows you to build uh, CNAP packages. Um, uh, it has some opinions there, but basically you can do Duffel build. Uh, in this case, using actually building a Docker invocation image using a Docker file. That's sort of an optional part, um, uh, implementation detail rather. But they're like you can build your package uh, from the one I like from that directory I had before, and Duffel install um, again, like pointing at your config uh, will allow you to do so. The dash c bit is uh, a credential set, um, so the spec describes how you pass in credentials. Duffel has a, co a bunch of config. Uh, doesn't mean you can pass all of those things in as arguments on the CLI. That would be bad. It has a sort of indirection in credential sets. Um, Duffel I, I, in Docker app I used previously is just a CNAB client in the same way as Duffel is a CNAB client. Uh, Docker app, as I mentioned, is a, a CNAB client as well. But it's also about building, what we're trying to do there is, rather than Duffel, which is wholly unopinionated, very much a generic tool, um, Docker app is a very opinionated tool currently um, really tied to sort of container space. Um, the and CNAPs can be used for provisioning any API-driven infrastructure. Docker app is really all about Docker and Kubernetes. Um, in particular, starting with actually a compose-based structure, though we'll probably add other things later. So taking a, a typical compose file that you've probably seen before, um, that's not new or novel. We've added basically a little bit of metadata. And again, this is specific to the Docker app tool, not to CNAB and not to compose. Um, and some high-level metadata. Um, in this case, in YAML, from the point of view of that's what users of Compose are using. And you can describe a bunch of parameters, um, again, in YAML, it's like the, in separate files. Like, this is a different user interface. This isn't the spec. The spec is not intended for people to go and hand write yeah, JSON files. Let's see a quick demo of that in an action. Maybe this one. 
So yeah, I, here I've got uh, that application. I've actually got it in instead of separate files, I've got it in one, uh, one multi-document file. Um, and handily, I, I should have a Kubernetes cluster up and running. Yeah, that should be fine. Have I got the right one? Yeah, that's the right one. Uh, so, Docker app install dash c. So I've in, I've installed my uh, thing. Actually, show a quick. Uh, I mentioned claims earlier. I've got a local claim store running, and there's compatibility between Docker app and Duffel locally, um, so I can use uh, Duffel to list my my application I just installed. Um, yeah, if I was to how much namespace this goes in? I think it's ah, oh, there it is. Yeah, so that launched something in my Kubernetes cluster. Um, again, what would have been more interesting to do there actually was, actually, I think I was slicing it. Let me order. Let's just go. Uh, so, I mean, ultimately, like Docker app, like the fall, you can install, you can upgrade, you can uninstall, you can grab the status of your application that's running. Um, uh, both Duffel and, uh, and Docker app actually support, I'd say, the parameters here and like dash dash set, similar to other things. A lot of this isn't trying to recreate the wheel. Um, inspect actually is one of those custom actions. Um, other, C, like, other CNAB clients could discover that the invocation images we build with Docker app have an inspect image and run them, and that's what we would get. Docker app obviously has like nose up there, there. Um, Probably most interesting is we're starting on a bunch of the distribution stuff. Obviously, my examples there have been, like, I'm just running some files on disk. I've got my local files. I've got a local package. Um, but I could have pushed that to Docker Hub. Um, so Docker app push, namespace, my, my name. At, at which point, I can jump to another computer. Anyone else can do that. And just Docker app install, Gareth R slash hello. That's the name of that application in this case. Um, very similar to the ease of use for just running a single container application or running something else. That um, The work to go on there has sort of been incubated within the tooling we've been building. Um, a bunch of it's getting pushed into the spec, and then it'll get generalized. The idea being that you'll be able to push and pull and run from remote registries, just as you might do a single like container application. For Docker app, CNAB is just an implementation detail. It's under the hood. Like the user is providing a compose file and some metadata, and they've got a, a command line tool that's optimized for installing that and other specific bits and pieces to do with like the compose file format and the fact we're targeting Kubernetes. We know we're targeting Kubernetes. We know we're targeting Docker. Well, so we just generate all of the parameters and the credentials required to do those things. They're not something that end users have to care about. We just build that interface under the hood. So you can actually dig down and get at that. So if you run Docker app bundle, that will actually build. Normally, these things are just built on the fly. But basically, that will build the invocation image. You could go spelunking around that in like using any container tooling. Um, you could actually, it will also generate the bu a bundle.json. And again, it's actually a bunch of Data and let's go have like it's, a bit, it's not that it's not very exciting, but is it there already? Yeah, Docker app bundle. Like this one's a bit more detailed than the other one. So you you can see I mentioned like we extend we add the custom action for inspect. We add a whole bunch of parameters. We add a credential basically for this the Docker context. Um, which allows you to pass in the Kubernetes and, and Docker creden uh, basically credentials. Um, all that's just automatically generated. This isn't for people to read or write. Um, for Docker app, CNAB is just an, imp it's an implementation detail. And that's the sort of intentions. That's the desired direction of travel for CNAB. It's not 
oh, great, people can now write these bundle.json files. If that sort of happens, it's sort of going to be horrible. Like, who likes writing RPM spec files? Like, I was like, there's going to be someone in the room. There's got to be someone in the building that likes writing them. Um, we adopted CNAB and sort of, well, I ended up sort of co generating CNAB with folks really because all of that stuff we were going to do ourselves anyway is totally undifferentiated. It's much more interesting if we can share. Um, and we get some things for free. So one of the other tools I'll show in a second is Duffelbag. Um, like the Microsoft people like naming things. Uh, like there's also, I've talked about basically CNAB being very generic in terms of tool chains. One of the things that actually supports by virtue of being that general, is you can bring multiple tool chains. It's not something we've tried to do yet with uh, Docker app, but actually bringing along your um, Terraform code or bringing along your like, uh, cloud formation templates. Actually, the spec supports all those things. It's an implementation detail for us to do those things and expose a nice user interface to it. But we already have that solved in a generic way. So it gives us. Like, we don't lock ourselves into something that's very specific to just what we're doing, which is sort of inter like interesting side benefit. Um, there's a bunch of examples in, a, in that repo if folks are interested in trying it out. Uh, second ago, I mentioned duffel bag. Um, one of the, I'm, like, for most of this audience, I'm going to guess people would rather have a CLI and they would rather install things from CLIs. Some people like GUI installers. Um, given that we've got that that bundle.json, given that that describes a user interface, um, we can generate graphical installers. Um, and so duffel bag basically is exactly that. If, if, I, if I can give it an invocation image, if I can give it a bundle.json, and I run what is actually a CLI tool against that, it will generate a uh, Electron application, like for Linux, for Mac, and for Windows. Um, that when you launch it, will basically give you a custom form and saying, well, these are the credentials you need to provide. These are the parameters you can provide or override. Click a button, and it will go off and install that application. Um, and that's the sort of thing that's interesting in a whole bunch of use cases, but you probably wouldn't build yourself. But actually, built once against something like CNAB, everyone can benefit from it. So it wasn't something that we were going to go off and build. It's definitely proving to be something that's interesting to some of our like, users and customers. Um, I showed you sort of the low-level bits of how you could handcraft a uh, CNAB package, like it's file system, it's file. Um, that's like understanding how that works is sort of useful if you're building tools on top of it. Never really. It also is useful at this stage because you can build demos that actually show why the format is useful. But realistically, like later users should never ever use that or need, need to care about it. Um, Docker app is really opinionated, where like, it's just about containers. Um, Porter is somewhere in between those two extremes. It's a purely de it's a declarative bundle builder it's a, it, for building uh, scene apps. Um, and it doesn't bring a load of opinions with it. So it gives you a YAML format, because uh, people like writing YAML. And the conversations around Porter are to make this basically like bring your own data structure format of choice. So I think there's a HCL implementation and like others. I keep bugging them to do a TypeScript one. Um, but here, probably, probably should have highlighted it. But you can see, well, it's got a name. It's got a version. Uh, that install step is just describing in a more straightforward way like what I want to happen. So rather than having to sort of say, oh, yeah, that's just like, that's going to generate the executable that's going to do all these different bits and pieces. Um, so you get a higher level way of building it. It has this concept of mix-ins, so there's mix-ins for, so you can introduce new types, which then generate, go off and generate the code for your CNAB module. So Porter sort of somewhere in between. Again, all of these tools are relatively new, um, but there's definitely space for different bits and pieces. If you like, Duffel is very, like, Sort of, it's the reference implementation. It's it's going to have loads of things, but it's going to be low level. Docker app is super opinionated for people doing container bits and pieces with that, with opinions that match like uh, mine and my teams. Porter is somewhere in between those two things. Other things might emerge. Other tools might just produce 
CNAVs without really changing any thing or adding new tools. Um, uh, Helm is probably a good example where uh, Helm has a package format. It's uh, possible that basically the Helm folks might say, well, actually, we can make our packages CNAV compatible. Nothing changed there. It, they were just, we're just generating a bunch of different artifacts, and suddenly everything's compatible. Not like magic, but hopefully useful. Um, not everyone like is obsessed with Go. I don't really like Go. I keep I keep using Go, but uh, and I don't get to program as much as I used to. Do, but I was, so I was like, right, I'm going to write a Python client um, against spec. And the spec is actually reasonably small. Uh, writing clients is a really good way of like testing the edges of spe specs, partly because you end up reading the words and then it, trying to implement them in code, and you go like, those words don't make any sense. Um, doing that before it's obviously like all done is a good idea. So I started writing a Python client. This is mainly complete. It's not quite complete yet. Um, uh, Python has types, like in the new version. It's very like I'm excited about that. Um, but yeah, Python CNR basically allows you to, uh, I, again, like if you want to describe that uh, the actual metadata. Um, well, yes, you could handwrite uh, JSON, uh, but you could write that in a proper programming language and reuse bits and pieces there. And uh, you could build, much, obviously, much more easily higher level user interfaces on top of this client if you were interested in using Python. Um, so that's, and that will give you the same thing. It's just arguably nicer syntax. Um, it also allows you to actually uh, load uh, seen abs from bundle, bundle files and again, like introspect them, but also uh, actually run their actions. So we could uh, grab a bunch of actions and go like, oh yeah, it has those actions and we could install it. Passing in the credentials in the sense like here, I'm running right at the bottom, uh, running the status action on the CNAB I, learned, I grabbed at the top and passing in the credentials for Kubernetes so it can run. It's a Helm one, you can guess it needs to. Um, one example, I'll, I'll show another uh, uh, like quick demo as well in a second, but one example I haven't got time to show here, um, partly because it involves uh, third-party infrastructure standing up a lot of bits, um, but it's definitely worth calling out uh, so the Bitnami folks built a CNAB module, again, by hand, not using any of the tooling, um, that uh, uses CloudFormation to stand up an RDS database, and then uses a Helm chart to install WordPress that then uses that database. Um, so that is one of those things where you've got multiple tool chains going on. Um, and I mean, in the Helm case, there was already a package in the, the thing, but it couldn't do the CloudFormation provisioning bit. Um, in the cloud formation sense, there was never a package. There was never a sort of concept that you could have a package around. So that's something that well, like, isn't possible really with anything else apart from it, it, like in a package context. That's the type of thing that you probably do with Ansible or with Bolt, where you run a, a command and you run a command and then you wrap it in something. Um, here we can say this is part of the same package. And if you like packages, that's good. Um, ultimately, we can sign those, we can attest those, we can share them, we can make them reusable. It's all good things. Um, so I said I've got, I'd show a quick another demo if I've got some time. Um, oh, that's part one, I'll skip that one. Uh, yeah, I think this is the right one. So, yeah, this is the right one. Um, one thing about the sort of positioning of CNAB is that it is quite meta. Like, I n you can use it to package things that are already packaged as well as things that can't be. And Docker app is obviously uh, been used there as the packaging format for Compose. And we're creating a CNAB that basically contains the compo Compose tool chain and Compose files. Um, now, Helm already has a concept of charts, but Helm charts actually only contain the, uh, basically the configuration. They don't contain like the images that are referenced by that con configuration. And also, each Helm chart is a single Helm chart. It makes sense. It's a single thing, and you might have dependencies between them. So it's not a, like you end up with a, uh, the, if you want to say that, install that, actually what you're saying is install this and several of its dependencies, which have dependencies on packages. So you've got multiple 
multiple types of artifact. You've got com Kubernetes configs and Docker images, and you've got a dependency tree. That's not one thing anymore. You're, like, you can't sign all of that without cleverness. Um, CNR basically does allow you to sort of package up things that are already packaged. So in this case, I've got, this one is, uh, let's, So what's happening there is it's launching an invocation image, which has uh, a Helm chart in there and the Helm tool chart chain. It's passing in the credentials for the Kubernetes cluster I've got running. Um, and it's running Helm in the context of the invocation image that's talking out to the Kubernetes cluster and it's installing the application on Kubernetes. Um, it's using Helm as a CNAB module. That allows us all of the other benefits I talked about in terms of like compatibility between different types of CNABs and uh, sharing in the same way as with, like with Hub. It's a first class package versus something in the middle. And we could put other things in there as well. And that's sort of worth showing. So and like rounding out, um, I've said it probably far too many times, but like uh, CNAB is a specification. It's like we've, we announced it a month ago. Like if you're thinking like, I wouldn't go home and use this to manage my infrastructure, you are correct, don't. Um, it's not there yet. I'm, I think it's interesting. It's an interesting problem, and I don't think there is a, a, like a single analog. I don't think it is just another format for its own sake. Um, there's a lot of sort of different use cases that we wouldn't have thought of yet. There's a, lot, there's a number of different use cases that we haven't explored in a lot of detail yet. Um, I didn't mention the, the, one of the ideas of having a single package. And ultimately, being, well, a, being able to sign that is really useful. Being able to think of that as a single thing, um, to put it on maybe actually a physical device and uh, for find like sort of more secure environments where there's like your fully air gap. You can have a single thing that can cross that boundary. Um, you're, you're also able to compile things into, yes, something may be larger, but there are no network requirements to install that. So for edge environments, that can be useful, for example. Um, it's, it's totally early days. There's a lot of sort of hacking potential. And like, if you're interested in the sort of spec stuff and standard stuff and how that works, this is sort of a small enough and friendly enough entry point to that. Um, but also, I mean, like the client library stuff. I mean, like there's uh, a few people have expressed interest in building client libraries like the Python one. Like the spec is small enough to make, like, it's not like hours of work, but it's not weeks of work by any stretch. And it's sort of an interesting exercise writing something against something, as long as with the caveat that the spec is changing. So like no one is going to use your clients until that stabilizes. But the more people build things against it, the quicker it will stabilize. And there's all sorts of tools we haven't even thought of that can go on top of this. Some of which will look like all the other tools we know about for package managers. Some of them could look like things we haven't done yet, like the multiple tool chain bits and pieces are really interesting. So I mean, like on that, like get involved if you're interested. Um, I mean, like there's a CNAB, CNAB uh, Slack channel on the CNCF Slack, uh, the Cloud Native Slack channel. Um, there's a community meeting now started up uh, just last week, every Wednesday, um, uh, and the, re the repo is probably the, one of the main places that a lot of discussions are happening. So go have a look at the issues, go have a look at the pull requests um, on the spec or on the tools. Um, a lot of them are in the Deus Labs repo and some of them are in the Docker one and there's a, a few under people's personal repos. There's a general sense that once we get some of the shared governance bits and pieces sorted out, we'll, we'll grab an org and go from there. But no, thank you. And yeah, any, any questions? Uh, there's one here. Yeah. So the question there was: Do any of the chain? Do any of the tools have a concept of like chaining together bundles? Um, the answer was: well, So there's a conversation going on in the context of the spec about whether dependencies are a good thing in the there. Um, partly because, like, 
the idea the idea is this is a single thing. I think dependencies are a tool problem, not a spec thing. I uh, people disagree, and there's a good conversation, good thread going. Um, the the problem with dependencies is you get away from it being about packaging an application to thinking you're packaging individual components. And we already have tools for packaging components in some cases. Uh, so I think it's the wrong thing to do, but I might be wrong. And there's a conversation going on. Having said that, Porter is also already doing dependencies in the tool. So Porter is like, if you're building them, you can, dis you can describe dependence, dependencies between things. And it builds you a single bundle based on those dependencies. Um, so yeah, conversation's going on. Uh, dependencies aren't there at the moment in the spec. They might turn up later. Some of the tools are implementing dependencies, like patterns. Um. So the question there is really, is CNAB a good fit for a generic sort of plugin manager? Um, so where it, I would say where it works right now is if the thing at the other end has an API and the core verbs work um, in terms of I want to install those things, I want to m m uh, modify them, I want to get rid of them, um, then it should work pretty well. Um, I've got a bunch of other sort of configuration use cases that I think CNAB fits well into. Um, but yeah, if it's, so it ultimately if it's, I, I, there's sort of other ones where it sort of fits a little bit, um, but might be stretching it. But that's one of the reasons why we want to look for like actual, the more use cases we come up with. Uh, one of the ones I've been playing around with is actually CI config. Um, uh, I think CI config fits a lot of the patterns I, I talked about previously. Um, it gets shared, I mean, like, it's everywhere. Um, it's generally source code at this point, um, Jenkins files or Travis files or whatever it might be. Um, we, we scatter them all over the internet, um, and we share them via copy and paste and, and mutation. There's no packages for any of those things, and there's no reusability in any of what we've done. Um, and actually, when you go through what, we've, what everyone has, they're all the same, bar like, I changed this word. I don't even know what that step does. Like, actually, I think in, in the context of CNAB, you could absolutely put that type of config in there. You could parameterize it with credentials. Um, and even if you just want to output it to standard out on the other end, that would give you a way of packaging those things up and sharing them on existing infrastructure. Uh, so there's not loads of people have done anything there yet. I think it is interesting. If there's API-driven things on the other side, then this like the pattern works really well, um, and again, I've mainly shown a bunch of Kubernetes examples. Partly because it's really easy, partly because I'm doing a lot of Kubernetes things. Um, but yeah, the spec is super unopinionated. API-driven infrastructure is basically entry point. Does install and uninstall make sense? I'd say in that context, yes. Be interesting to explore. Oh, any other questions? So I think we're good. Oh, right, one more. So the question there was basically uh, paraphrasing. Hooks are actually a pattern you see in uh, certain tools, including certain package, uh, package management tools. Um, uh, does CNAP have something like that? At the moment, no. Um, not that it couldn't do. Um, I think there's definitely a desire for us to get to a simple thing that's small uh, and that provides some value. But there's a bunch of other sort of patterns around packaging that would be interesting to explore. Ho hooks is definitely one of them. So not at the moment, but. Yeah, come and hang out and like suggest something. All right, uh, we're out of time. Uh, give it up for Gareth. Thank you very much. Oh, thank you.